Today we're going to be looking at how we can create a multi-step form in Symfony without any JavaScript. Okay, so we've got a lot to do, so let's jump in. Uh, here we have the form and we want to change this from a simple one-step form to a multi-step form because we need to add some more fields to the event. So let's jump into the code very quickly. This is the form we have at the moment. Fantastic. Okay, so let's jump in. First off, what we are going to do is create something called a DTO. Data transfer object, like so. And inside of here, we need to create an event details DTO, like that. We need to create an event location DTO, like that. And lastly, we need to create an event par, oh, invitations actually, invitations DTO. Okay, so a data transfer object is essentially just an object that contains some information um, that we're going to use uh, to transfer it somewhere else. All right? It's just a, a way of getting information from one place to another place. So inside of here, we need to define the, the things that we want to know. So for example, we create some properties. Um, let's say inside of here, we want a title, which will be a string. Also, uh, no, keep it like that, uh, title, or do we call it name? Uh, let's go to the form type, it's title. Okay, so title, um, then we need a uh, date time immutable, like so. This will be uh, start at, start at, like that, and then end at like so um, is there anything else we need in there no I think that's everything um, let's just on to be on the safe side make them by default make them null like that okay then we can create the getters and setters like so and da da that's that okay one done. Um, so the next we need is the location. Um, what we're doing here is we're creating the steps uh, for the form, um, but we're creating them in an object format. Um, so um, we need in the location, we just need the address, I think, um, which will be a string. And again, uh, let's make that nullable. Well, not just null by default. And might need it like that. Okay, good, good, good. Goody, goody gumdrops. Next. So let's create a um, property. Let's call this is going to be an array collection. And we're going to call this um, participants, participants, like that. Okay, and then in here we need the constructor. Um, we can get rid of that. And here, new array collection, like so. So we can just add it to the array collection. Oops, today doing it the wrong way. Um, int, and this will be a user. So we're in an array collection of users. So now go down to the bottom, we can generate the getter and setter. Um, Ah, just as a, a, a quick thing that we also need to do, um, let's add in here a, a carbon immutable date time, and we'll call this created, ooh, created at, like so. And then we will set um, this created at equals to a new carbon immutable, like that. Um, and we can do that for, for all of them. The reason we're creating them is because we're going to be creating some forms. And those forms are going to accept the DTO. Uh, let's just call it event. Oops, it needs to be inside a form, like so. So now, inside of here, let's create a event details form type, like so. 
and inside again let's create another one called event location form type like so and then finally event par no invitations and invitations form type like so okay um, so I'm not going to bore you with creating the forms because that will take bloody ages so I'll be back in a moment okay and I'm back so um, as you can see in here we have the event details form type and then we have the event details DTO that we're using as the data class um, and this looks wrong there we go okay correct that so the event invitations event invitations DTO like so and it's the same for the event invitations and it's also the same for the event location form and DTO um, as you can see we have uh, so three different forms and we will be using each one as a step to create the ultimate object which is the event okay so now we've got that how can we pull this all together so we need to go to our event controller and at the moment we have um, rather sillily whatever um, we have this event uh, cr which is creating it as well so it's a bit meh. so we need to fix this so let's call that events and inside of here call that index because we don't want to create anything in here anymore and we can get rid of the form uh, we don't need that um, so we're just going to return oh, did we have any in events there no we got them from the user in the twig template, so we don't need to pass anything in. So you could uh, make a recall here to the repository, get your events and then pass them in here. Um, perhaps you want to do some filtration or something, uh, which you could do here. But for now, we're not going to do that. Let's go to the templates. Let's go ooh, event create. Okay, so this one we need to change to index like so and now that's looking groovy aha so in, inside of this event uh, index well now index.html.twig we have this form goodbye we don't need that anymore right we uh, we want to maybe replace it with um, an href tag um, let's say path create event or oh, actually we need to change that and let's pass in a step parameter and we will call this details like so don't worry if this doesn't make too much sense it will all make sense in a moment when we all put it together um, so uh, next we need to um, actually have some styling on this uh, button because it looks a little bit sad uh, we'll call it create event and then we can add some styling in there like so okay so if we head over to here let's give it a refresh it might complain that that oh no it won't complain because it's going to this uh, event page anyway i was thinking doesn't matter oh yeah i was right it did complain haha -ha. okay so it's complaining that that um, event create doesn't exist which is good because it doesn't so now we need to go down here just copy and paste one of your thing uh, one of your uh, endpoints and uh, we can then create that endpoint. Uh, actually, create create event like so. So what we need to happen is that when the form is on a specific step, then we need it to load a specific file um, with a specific form. So that sounds very complicated, but don't worry. Okay, so let's just actually we'll put it at the front here and it will be a string and it will be a step like so. Um, now what we're going to do is at the top of here we're going to define some um, private constants. Um, I'm going to say step event create step one equals details. Now we have some order in our chaos. Next, 
Now we're going to create a match function. And this match function is going to take the step. And then this step, we're going to check if the step equals step one. And if it does, then we need to do something. So for example, in this situation, we this is going to create the form. Okay, so we're going to equal form. And then we're going to say render um, event create step one. Oh, event form, event create form. Yeah, okay, form step one, like so. Step three, like so. Let's now create these uh, methods. Oh, okay, add method. There we go. So now this will return a form interface. And we need to now, um, actually we're gonna put into the uh, constructor at the top here, we'll put in a uh, request stack. Um, request stack like so, because we need to access the session. So now we can say um, this request stack get session get so this will equal to the event form step one, like so. And in this should be equal to the event details, DTO, like that. Okay, so now we need to do a little check. We need to say if the event for event details DTO is not an instance, instance of event details DTO, then the event details DTO is equal to a new instance of that object, uh, like so. Okay, and then we can say this, create form, event details, form type and then pass in the event details DTO and then that's what we're going to return. Pretty neat, huh? And now we need to do the same thing for all of these and I'm not going to waste your time doing that or showing you so I'll be back in a moment. Okay now I've created the form um, render for the other steps. Um, we can now continue. So back to our create method inside of here, we can now say, um, actually we need to have a default um, return. So let's say um, we'll redirect to a route um, and we'll say we'll redi redirect to this route, but to a specific step. For example, if something goes wrong, um, we don't want them to you know, be lost in limbo. So we'll redirect them to step one, like so. Um, right, so now if we say request, um, oh, sorry, no, form, handle request, rather, and like so, and then we say if um, form is submitted and form is valid. Now we need to do something in there, right? Um, so now what we need to do is create another match. Ooh, match. So in this um, match method or function, in this match function rather, um, we're going to check if something is true. So what we need to check is if the current step is equal to uh -huh the first step, um, which this one. And if it is, then we need to say um, handle event form step one, like so, step three. And I'm gonna actually copy this redirect. Um, so just in case, you know, something goes wrong, it will then redirect them to step one. Excellent, okay, so now, this is okay, but we need to create these handle um, methods. 
So how can we do this? Uh, we don't need that. We can import that and it's not going to pass in a redirect. It's only going to pass in a form. So inside of here, all we need to do is get the request stack, get the session and set the session with the form data. So we need to get the step one like that. And then uh, we can just say, uh, whoops, form get data. Because we know that the data on this form is going to be an event detail object, event details DTO object rather. So it will store that in our session. And then we can just return a redirect to the create and then now we're going to change the step. We're going to change the step to self step two, like so. And this will return a re response. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my book. Use the QR code to find it. Have a good day.